Hello everyone, Dan Vega here with another tutorial. Today I want to talk to you about creating tasks in Visual Studio Code. Now don't get me wrong, I love my IDs, but there are often times when I just need to create a simple project or a quick demo and I need something lightweight but has some of the same powerful features that an IDE gives me. And that's where Visual Studio Code comes in. I've been using it a lot lately and there's some really cool things we can do with it and I want to share them with you today. Now, the, prod, the demo that we're going to go through today may not relate to what you're trying to do, but I still think you should stick through this tutorial. We're going to learn the basics of how to create tasks and how to set up some of the uh, configuration that comes with it. And I think once you learn those, you can apply that to whatever you're trying to do. So let's jump into a demo and see what we can do here. All right, so we're here in Visual Studio Code, and I have a folder open called Hello Spring Boot, and I just want to talk through the scenario real quick. So we're creating a Spring Boot app. If you know nothing about it, don't worry. It's not really important. What is important is we need to create some tasks to connect our editor to our command line interface. So Spring Boot comes, ships with a tool called the Spring CLI, which allows you to run different commands for things like running the application, testing the application, creating executable jars, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're going to do is create a task that kind of connects the editor to the Spring CLI. Now you could write some code, jump over to terminal, run your command, come back, but why keep going back and forth when we can do it all right here in our editor? Okay, so I'm going to open up this file, this app.groovy. This is going to be the base for our application. Nothing more than a Spring uh, REST controller that we can run using Spring Boot. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and set up some tasks. And to do so, we're going to go to View and the Command Palette, or we can use the keyboard shortcut Shift-Command-P. And we're going to start typing tasks. And if we don't have any tasks, one of the things we need to do right away is configure a task runner. So I'm going to hit Enter on that. And what it's going to do, it's going to create a folder here called .vscode, and there's going to be a task.json in there. And this is basically just a kind of a default to get you going type of thing. Uh, but what I want to do is go ahead and get rid of all of this, uh, but you, you will want to go ahead and dive through there because there's some good examples in there on what you can do and how you can do that. So the first thing you'll notice right at the top here is there's some available variables which you can use inside of strings, and they give you references to things like the workspace root. So if you use this particular um, variable you can use that right inside of a string and that way you don't have to figure out exactly what what the path to the current directory is and etc so once you know that uh, we're gonna jump in and start defining our tasks so if you hit control space you actually get a list of settings that you can put inside your task here and the nice thing is there's a little description below that uh, of what that particular setting does so I'm going to start typing, and the first thing we can do is when we hit version, I'm going to hit enter. And it actually auto-completes for us and enters in uh, the default value, which in this case is 0.1.0. .0. Next, we're going to issue a command. So the command is what command we're trying to run from the command line. In this case, it's spring. But let's say we had a scenario where we did, the, did something different on Windows. So for whatever reason, this was called Spring CLI on Windows, and on, um, on this OS X, it was something else. We can kind of define something else here, and so on. Um, I'm not actually going to use that, but I did want to make, make you aware that you can have operating system specific commands there. So we're just going to say Spring, and that's exactly what I would run from the command line. Next, uh, we're going to say, is that a shell command? Yes, it is. Um, next, we'll have show output. I'm just going to leave this as a default. Uh, you, you can look in the documentation on this, but basically this controls the output window. And there's a, a few different modes, silent, always, and never. Next, uh, args, any arguments that we want to pass to our spring command. At this time, I'm not going to use any. Uh, we'll look at a demo after we walk through all of this and show you how to pass some arguments to the top level spring command. Finally, I'm going to define some tasks. And really, these are the all of the tasks that we're going to run inside of 
the spring command. So spring is the main command, the command line interface that we're going to use. Inside of spring, there's different commands we can run, like run, test, um, jar to create an executable jar, init to create an initial project. And these are kind of our tasks inside of our task, um, inside of our main command, if you will. So to do this, we're going to define each task. And the first task that we're going to say is run. And so we're going to say that to run this, I want to run the command run and then whatever file that I'm on. And there's actually another pretty interesting set in here that really tripped me up first. So suppress task name is true. And basically that says, hey, um, it says controls whether the task name is added as an argument to the command. And in this case, I want to suppress that. I don't want this as part of the task. Um, you'll see when we go to run it, this is the actual name that comes up. And I want to suppress that because I'm going to actually name this something different in a minute. But this is the actual argument I want to pass to my command. So my command at this point is spring run and then a particular file. And that's exactly what we want. Um, finally, we'll have show output. We're just going to use always for this one. And I think that's it. So let's go ahead and save this. So once we have our tasks in place, we can run them by using the command palette again. But you'll remember, in this case, I'm going to just run this for a particular file that I have open. So if I want to go ahead and open that file and hit shift command P again, I'm going to go ahead and hit run task. And then down when I hit run task, this will be a list of tasks that I've configured for this project. And you'll see the default is run. So I'm going to go back into my task.json and I'm going to say run spring boot project. Now, if I didn't have this set suppress task name, if I had this as false, then I would actually try and create the command spring space run spring boot project space run files. You see what I'm doing there. So you may you want to make sure that suppress task name is on. So once we have this ready to go, let's go back to our app.groovy and I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So run task and now I have that run spring boot project. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And at this point it's gonna show us this output window. And in this output window, it's going to run just like a command would in our shell. So in this case, we're in terminal. And it's going to go ahead and run that. And if it needs to, uh, Spring Boot will download any dependencies. But at the end of the day, it doesn't. So right now at the end, if you've ever run a Spring app before, uh, Spring Boot app, then this should look familiar. We have Tomcat started on port 8080, and it's running. So at this point, I want to open up a browser and go ahead and refresh localhost 8080 and there's our simple app uh, all of our app did, all our app did was print out the words hello world to the browser from a rest endpoint so nothing fancy going on there but uh, something else that tripped me up when you're in this output window in this, in the case of this particular command this doesn't just run and then stop it it actually spawns a process and keeps that process running so we need a way to stop this, and we can actually do this uh, by hitting Shift Command P again, typing task, and you'll see down here there's a terminate running task. So that'll actually stop this process that we've started. So that definitely tripped me up the first time. So I just want to make that aware. So that's how we can create like a basic task. Um, obviously, you could start to get pretty crazy with this. So remember when I said before that, um, so we have arguments on each individual task. Um, I have an argument that I want to put on the top level task of Spring. There's actually a dash D argument that'll let us run in debug, debug mode. And what this does is it actually gives us a lot more information in the console. So I'm going to go ahead and run this again. Task run and we'll run. And when we run this in debug mode, we actually get a bunch more stuff. And one of the things we get is an auto configuration report. So it's gonna print out a bunch more stuff in there in this window. And it should be right here. So there's our auto configuration report that we only get in debug mode. So that's nice. Um, not only can we 
uh, create a top level command with some sub level tasks, but we can also add arguments to our top level command if we need to. So that's just one task. Um, I'm just gonna paste in a little snippet that I have of something I'm working on. Uh, I'm just putting a bunch of tasks together that we can do. So we can do things like run, test, and then there's an init command that will actually create a project for us based on the spring initializer. So in this case, this task name is, I'm just gonna create a Spring Boot app based on Java, maybe in a web project, or maybe this one, I'm creating a groovy Gradle web project. And then there's another task for creating an executable jar, and there's a few other things that we can do that I might add to this. But that's all there really is to it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and push these to a Git repo. So if you wanna pull them down and take a look at them, you can. Also, if you got any suggestions for some other tasks that we can start creating, um, I'd love to get a little repo going and, and put some more items in there. So if you can, please go ahead and thumbs up this video, like it, comment, give me some feedback, let me know how it is. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching, guys.